Hello, good day everyone. You're welcome once again to this channel, Dr. Fred Academy. Today we shall be looking at the, uh, the bones of the pelvic ghetto, also known as the oscose. Now, this bone is made up of uh, two parts. It has the left part and the right part. Each of these parts or halves is made up of three different bones. Okay? Three different bones make up each of this half. Now, this is the left half and this is the right half. Okay? These two halves are joined at this, uh, uh, jo at this, at this point here. Okay? This is a symphysis. Okay? It is called the pelvic symphysis. Remember, we are talking about the pelvic ghetto. Okay? So, these two halves are joined at the pelvic symphysis. I will tell us the the makeup or what makes up this pelvic symphysis as we as we as we go ahead with this video okay so uh, the way I would um, take this study would be to discuss these three different bones differently okay one after the other so I will be talking about uh, the, the the ilium the pubis and then the ischia okay these three bones actually make up these um, left and right part of this uh, bone the pelvic ghetto okay now these three bones that are present on the left are also present on the right so we can say that the bones are paired okay remember that the pelvic ghetto is uh, the largest flat bone uh, present in the body of an animal it is the largest uh, flat bone okay so we let's begin our discussion Okay, um, this is actually, this way is actually the correct positioning in a live animal. So that this is the dosal aspect, the dosal aspect, okay, while this is the ventral aspect, okay. So because the legs of the animal will be this way, this point and then this point, alright. Okay, let's go ahead with the discussion of these three bones. Uh, take note that whichever one we discuss on this side is already present on this side so we won't do double discussion so uh, the three bones I mentioned earlier on that makes up each part of this pelvic ghetto are number one the three bones include the first one is the ilium this is the ilium okay the whole of this is the ilium okay and then we also have the pubis Okay, we also have the pubis. This is the pubic bone or the pubis. And then finally, the third one, this is the, the ischium. Okay, this is the ischium. I take it again. This is the ilium. All right, this is the ilium. This is the pubis or pubic bone. And then this is the ischium. Okay, the ischium. So let me begin by uh, with the, 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 the ilium. But before that, Take note that this opening here is called the obturator foramen. The obturator foramen, why this is the acetabulum. Okay, this is the acetabulum. This is actually the point where the, this is actually the point that, in, that, 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 uh, that uh, where the head of the femur inserts. Okay, the head of the femur enters into this point. This is the what? Acetabulum. Remember that this acetabulum is made up of two parts. We have the articular parts. This is a smooth area. That is the articular part. And then if you look deep inside on the central aspect is a more roughened surface. Okay. It is a non-articular part. Okay. I said this is the articular part or articular surface. While this more central roughened area is the non-articular part, which is also called the acetabular fossa. Okay. So the acetabular fossa is the, the acetabular fossa is the non-articular part of the acetabulum okay so let's go ahead with our discussion so we begin with uh, the ilium okay so this is the ilium now the ilium is actually made up of um, it is actually it is the big it's the largest of these three bones that we talked about okay this is the ilium it is the largest of the three bones that we have just uh, mentioned and I want to let you know that the ilium, okay, the ilium on both sides, okay, the ilium is made up of two surfaces, okay, that is the dosal surface 
and the ventral surface. Okay, this dorsal surface is also called the gluteal surface. Okay, while the ventral surface is also called the the pelvic surface. Okay, it's also called the pelvic surface. It has the crests. Okay, this is the iliac crest. Okay, and then it has the body. Now this body goes into the formation of the acetabulum. Okay, this body goes into the formation of the acetabulum. For one thing you must take note of is that the bodies of the three bones, okay, that is the bodies of the ilium, the body of the ischium, and the body of the pubis, all go into the formation of the acetabulum. So if you watch very closely, the pubis, this is the body of the pubis going into the uh, formation of the acetabulum, this is the body of the ischium going into the formation of the acetabulum. And then this is the body of the ilium, which also goes into the formation of the acetabulum. So the three of these bones contribute in the formation of the acetabulum. So let's go back and, uh, to the, the ilium. Okay, so we said the ilium is made up of the dorsal or gluteal surface and then the ventral or pelvic surface. It also has a crest. Okay. And then it has two uh, 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 tuberosities, okay, on the medial aspect and then on the lateral aspect. Now, this one on the lateral aspect is called the tuber coxae. That is the point of hip, okay, point of hip, hip, H-I-P, all right? And then this is a tuber sacra. Now, this is actually the point that, uh, that fuses with uh, the sacrum. Okay, so that if we have the sacrum here, okay, if, of, of course, this is sacrum, it, it actually meets this way. Okay, you see why it is now called the tuba sacra. Okay, because this, this uh, tuba here, tuberosity, actually meets with the, with the sacrum. Okay, so this is the tuba sacral. Okay, why this is the tuba coxae. All these are uh, you know, projections for, roughen projections for attachment of uh, various muscles okay now i have mentioned uh, the crest okay and then also the body which goes into the formation of the the acetabulum now you should also take note that on the ventral surface or pelvic surface there is also an, an area okay for articulation with the sacrum as i said earlier on now this is this area is called the auricular surface it is actually this point, okay? It, at this point, this is a point where it articulates with the sacrum, okay? Now, this is the sacrum, all right? So, at this point where it articulates with the sacrum, it's called the auricular surface. It is actually present on both sides of this uh, bone, okay? Now, let's go over to the next bone, okay? Uh, the next one is the ischium, okay? Now, this is the ischium. This is the issue. Okay. Now the, the issue also has the the dosal and then the ventral surface. Okay. The dosal and then the ventral surface. So this is the ventral surface. I'm holding the this bone as it should be in a live animal. Okay. For a better understanding. Now this is the dosal surface. Now this dosal surface is also called the pelvic surface. Alright. And then we have the ventral surface. Uh, this is for the ischium. Okay. Now this projection at this point, remember this side, the, 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 that of the, the this side is broken. So this one here is called the tuba sky. Okay. Or you call it the ischiatic tuba. The ischiatic tuba. Okay. All right. Now um, the body of this issue, this is the body. If we look at the ventral aspect, this is the body. Okay, this is also the body of this part. Okay, this is the body of the issue. It goes into the formation of the word acetabulum. This also, this other side, the body also goes into the formation of the acetabulum. Okay, now it has a, a, a borders. Okay, it has a lateral border. Okay, this is a lateral border. And then this is a medial border, okay? This is the medial border. This is a lateral border. Why this is a caudal border of this bone, the caudal border. 
all right okay now i must also tell you that the ramos or part of the the issue uh, the, the point where the both both sides of the issue meet okay the left and the right parts they meet at the center okay to form a synthesis okay to form a synthesis. now this synthesis here is called the ischiatic synthesis okay so the ischiatic synthesis contributes in the formation of the pelvic the entire pelvic synthesis okay so this point from this point downwards is the ischiatic synthesis okay so the ischiatic synthesis from this point to this point okay this point to this point is actually the point where the where the left and the right parts of the issue meets okay where they fuse okay now um let's talk about the third bone which is the pubic bone or the pubis now this is the pubic bone okay it is the smallest of these three bones okay remember i told you that the the, the largest is the ilium okay followed by uh, the largest is the ilium okay and then the smallest is the is the pubis or the pubic bone so this pubic bone, if we place this bone properly as it is, it should be in the live animal, you will also see it this way, okay? This is a pubic bone, the pubic bone. Okay, the body of this pubic bone, I turn this way, the body of this pubic bone also goes into the formation of the what? Acetabulum. So if you look properly, this is the body, it goes into the formation of the acetabulum, okay? And then the ramus of this uh, pubic bone also meets the ramus of both the left and the right part, they meet at the center, okay, to form another union. And then this point is called the pubic synthesis. Okay, so at this point, I can tell you that, or you should know that the pubic synthesis and the ischiatic synthesis combine to form the pelvic synthesis as a whole. So the whole of this synthesis, the whole of this point where the two Oscose, the two halves of the oscose meet, okay, the point where they meet or fuse together is called the pelvic synthesis, okay. That means that the pelvic synthesis comprises the pubic synthesis and the ischiatic synthesis. Thank you very much for uh, watching and don't forget this is the acetabulum and this is the obturator foramen. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I believe this video uh, has helped you and uh, you have had a better understanding of what the pelvic uh, girdle of a domestic animal is like or what it should be. I would advise that you subscribe to this channel for more videos. If you have questions, you can drop it. We will uh, attend to that. Okay. Don't also forget to click on the notification bell icon when you have um, so sub subscribed. Drop your comments when needed. Thank you.